love, how are you? I'm Sindal and today we're gonna talk about adding water to gel. So this eco styler gel I have is running out. I'm gonna refill this eco and see how it works. So where's that now? ASMR. I feel like I put a lot, but they say you gotta stay committed to mixing it, so let's do it. Where the consistency doesn't stay the same or it's not like the original gel, it's giving gel to me. <laughs> Wait, bro. You got I'm gonna try to fill this whole thing, so let's do that. It's a lot. Did I just do something really, really dumb? Or is it gonna play for me? I think it's coming though, it's coming, it's coming. And we are done. Okay, please drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. We are done. Those we ever are running out of gel. Here you go. Later, besties. <laughs> Let's talk about it and understand that you can add water to gel until you slip and slide across the world. Girl, I'm just giving you the pros and cons and you decide what critters you want to grow in your scalp during your spare time. Let's go. Any video clip that I use in this video is protected by fair use laws, so don't get in your feelings. It's nothing personal. I do not know you. I do not have any ill feelings and that is why I do the best I can at blurring faces. Adding water to gel or other cosmetic prop or other cosmetic products will indeed lead to bacterial and fungal growth within the product that you've added the water to. Understand that water is life, right? Water is one of the fabrics of life. You are 70% water. Here is a detailed explanation on why you adding water to your hair products to stretch them out is going to cost you way more than you just buying another thing of gel when you run out. So let's get into it. This is why adding water to gel promotes bacterial growth. Number one, when you add water to gel or any product that's already formulated, you are disrupting the product's preservative system. Commercial gels are formulated with preservatives to combat the overgrowth or the growth of microbes. This protects against microbial growth. These preservatives are designed for the product's original formulation. So if one product is added like water, which is the giver of life, then you are going to have something that is not able to limit or prevent any overgrowth of yeast or bacteria bacteria or any other microbes. The preservatives are meant for the original formulation that has a specific balance and percentage of ingredients to ensure that it's actually working. When you add water, you dilute the preservative, making it weaker and way less effective of preventing the overgrowth of yeast, bacteria, and other microbes that are just in the air, especially because you added water. Number two, water is a breeding ground for microorganisms. Microorganisms like bacteria and fungi need moisture to survive and multiply. By adding water to the gel, you are just simply introducing a key element that makes an amazingly favorable environment for yeast, bacteria, and other microbes. You literally just making a putty bowl full of bacteria. Number three, number three is going to be the breakdown of the product stability. Water can disrupt, water can disrupt the product's natural pH balance, which is preventing it from being a favorable environment for bacterial growth. But when you add water, you actually increase the likelihood and the environment, making it more favorable for the bacteria that causes different scalp and follicle infections in the first place. You are doing so much more harm than good. If you are a person who adds water to your conditioner, to your to your shampoo to stretch it, to any product that you have, if you add water and then put it back in the in the cabinetry or wherever you put it, waiting for the next time that you use it, and you are a person who's like, I don't grease the scalp, I don't do this, I don't do that, but I still have this bacterial growth in my hair. If you are a person who adds water to your products, ding, 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 we have a winner, this is why. And see, when you add water, you break down the gel structure and by 
breaking down the jail structure it results in a uneven consistency so in some spots you put it in it may not have that much bacterial growth but then it's another spot where it's accumulated it that you're just spreading all over your scalp this is going to lead to contamination spreading all across your scalp and this is the thing some people are noticing like oh my god my kids have scalp infections and everything the gel that you're putting on your scalp you are using a comb and a brush to comb it through so the comb and the brush has all of the gel in it so that yeast and bacteria is that whatever yeast and bacteria or whatever microbes you grew within that container of the gel the conditioner whatever because y'all add water to everything right so whatever that new those new microbes are that you grew they're going to be on your combs your brushes your pillowcases your scarves everything right because most of us don't sanitize things properly and you don't think you have to sanitize because you don't think you've done anything wrong adding water to products let's keep going number four let's talk about how contaminated gel and other products end up affecting the scalp bacterial and fungal infections as stated before contaminated gel ends up spreading fungus and fungi across the scalp and within the follicle a warm moist environment of the scalp especially when covered by wet hair is going to again cause these microorganisms to grow causing things like folliculitis folliculitis is inflammation of the hair's follicle scalp acne which a lot of people have or wingworm which is which is a fungal infection of the scalp number two blocked hair follicles bacteria from the contaminated gel or conditioner or shampoo whatever the product is that you mix your little water in it ends up mixing that bacteria ends up mixing with the scalp's natural sebum and this ends up blocking the follicle. a massive deduction in oxygen flow to the scalp which will in return lead to redness tenderness flaking extreme extreme flaking redness thinning over time caused by massively throwing off the skin's natural skin cell turnover cycle where every 28 days the skin cells die off and make their way up with new hair but if you are causing massive scalp infections by introducing contaminated gel conditioner shampoo whatever you're mixing water in then baby you are the cause of your scalp and follicle infection and most likely if you went to a dermatologist you're following their rules but i bet money you didn't stop mixing water in your products hmm Number three is going to be an impaired scalp barrier. We've talked so much in the video linked in the description box below about the scalp's barrier and the hair shaft's barrier, but we're talking about the scalp's barrier right now. And when you add water to your conditioner and you put this these products in your hair or whatever you add water to, you end up introducing massive, massive issues. Using contaminated products like like gel with water added to it can widely disrupt and weaken the scalp's natural skin barrier. This is going to make it more vulnerable to infections, irritations, and different scalp and follicle disorders. Number one, avoid adding water to the gel. If you want to spread it, which is weird, I guess, then instead of you adding water to the container, put a little bit of the gel in your hand and add water in your hand right before you put it in your hair or get a separate bowl and add the water and mix it in there and then add it to your hair like day of dry it all the way through so that there's no other living organisms in there and then okay i still don't recommend that but i mean it's a little bit easier you guys need to really really learn how to shop for hair products you do not even with me making different videos link in the description box i tell you guys all the time to buy professional products but whenever i say that it's like oh well they're expensive well if you shop like let's say for amazon by for an example if you see me 
company tell you to get something like Nexus, even if you don't want to buy the full size bottle, they have sample bottles or you can get little sample packets for like one or two dollars. And if you get four of them, they're four weeks in a month. That'll last you the whole month and some other days, unless you're washing your hair every week, you won't even use all four of those sample packs. So there are no excuses whatsoever for you using professional grade products or good products. You can get the small mini sample sizes y'all. The price is not an excuse when y'all out here buying a $600 blow dryer. And I think that's the only thing that irritates me. Like. Number two is going to always be to clean your hands and tools. So make sure that your hands and your tools are always clean. Your scarves, your brushes, your pillowcases, all of that. When you lay down at night, the Dimidex mites that are on your scalp and all over your body, they come out to mate and lay eggs and all of that stuff on your scalp. As grossed out as you are, they are part of our body's natural floral. You can never get rid of them. So it is your job to make sure you keep them balanced. And girl, you mix them water in your shampoos and your conditioners and your gels especially your gels girl you ain't helping nobody but the demodex mice they having a party and having kids they getting pregnant you see this video she's laying an egg Number three is going to be to store products properly. When you read the back of any product, you will see that it's going to have a, a suggestion for a temperature for you to have it stored within, especially a hair product that has any type of water or that is a cream consistency or anything like that. You know I'm a nerd, right? And just simply telling you that you are growing bacteria isn't going to be enough. Now I'm going to tell you the exact names of the bacteria that you're growing. Let's talk about it. This is a common water bound bacterium that thrives and lives in contaminated gels, shampoos, conditioners, and products with added water to them. This causes infections like seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff, folliculitis, or dermatitis, especially in scalps that are already compromised. Staphylococcus, which can also, which is commonly found on the skin, but can grow violently in contaminated gels and other products with added water with no balanced preservative system. This leads to scalp infections, boils, or even more severe infections. This, this one right here is pretty commonly known, but did you know that it can grow up inside of products that you add water to? If introduced via unclean water, so who knows what type of water you use it, it can cause irritation or minor scalp infections. Yeast and fungi. Here is one that you guys know very commonly. This is a yeast that thrives in warm, moist environments. Contaminated gels. Contaminated gel applied to the scalp. This form of yeast loves warm and moist environments. So adding gel contaminated with this form of yeast or just adding a contaminated gel with any type of growth of fungi, yeast, or bacteria, adding that to the scalp is only going to worsen the case of whatever type of follicle infection, whatever type of follicle infection that you have or something that is growing that your body is fighting against. You add in a contaminated gel or hair product that's only going to make it worse. I promise you, you are doing so much more harm than good. All to save a little book. Girl, gel don't cost that much. This is a species of yeast as well. It is found naturally on the scalp, but if you are using a contaminated product, it can overgrow in this it can overgrow in products and again adding it to the scalp those whatever those bacteria are whatever those forms of yeast and bacteria are that you are growing in the contaminated product is going to make it worse which again will lead to seborrheic dermatitis everybody's complaining about dandruff seborrheic dermatitis scalp infection but nobody's looking to the small things my father used to always say it's the little foxes that kill the vine y'all not looking at the little foxes y'all looking at I use my hair organics and my hair came out this is a mold this is a mold that can grow in hair products that have been contaminated by extra water or other living organisms this is more common in poorly stored 
in poorly stored or old products. Next, of course, is mold. These are two forms of mold that, that have been exposed to water and oxygen. They produce spores that irritate the skin and scalp. Please stop adding water to stuff. Most people think that they can get away with it, right? But I need you to understand that bacteria can start growing, multiplying, colonizing within 24 to 48 hours of you mixing it. So if you mixed it on Monday thinking, oh girl, this, this gel gonna last me a week. Girl, every single day that that gel or whatever the product is that you mix water with is sitting down, it is multiplying, colonizing, and getting ready to attack your follicles. And, and and no oh my god so the videos like this y'all do not stop listening to these people want to blame america for you having ball spots it's not america's fault bacteria takes 24 to 48 hours it needs favorable conditions favorable moisture oxygen and warmth whether the oxygen levels are good for you or not doesn't matter how are the oxygen levels for the certain types of bacterium if you want to learn more about the different forms of yeast and bacteria that live on your scalp i have a whole playlist and in one of those videos i give you over 27 out of a thousand different forms of yeast and bacteria that live on the scalp. If you want to know more, check the playlist linked in the description box below and somewhere in the cards. Yeast is going to grow in about two to three days depending on the environment's pH and temperature. Mold typically takes about three to five days to start to grow within a hair product. Although some mold species start growing within 48 hours, so it's a toss up. That's why you got to stop playing. Some visible signs of contamination is the gel may start to change colors, the texture will get different, and there may be a slight odor or a change in the original order as these colonies of these different microbes begin to grow. I need you to be aware that the colonization and the contamination can happen long before any of these times show up. These time frames are just an overall estimate, conclusion, and hypothesis. Well, not necessarily hypothesis. This is the overall conclusion that scientists have came to studying all of the different elements. If you want to know even more, or if you want to read a detailed breakdown of why the hell you should stop mixing water with products, especially stuff like gel or just anything, stop mixing products, then make sure you check the link in the description box below so you can head over to my website read through my free blog and check and see what free resources I have for you join my free group just so you can make video requests if you've been having issues and problems most likely after the first day I can't really get to all of the comments but I'll forever be able to answer you on my website so go join my free group ask questions there and when you ask questions in my free group I make videos about them here on my channel so I love you guys so much and until my next video girl stop mixing water and stuff in your hair in your products and stop adding oils and butters and greases if you feel that whoever the person that made the product was who if, if, it, if the formulation not good enough for you you feel like you got to get in there and make it then you shouldn't buy it that's crazy that's like going to ihop or not ihop i don't know going to your favorite restaurant getting a burger paying all that money for it and being like you know what can i go back there and cook this shit myself because i don't like it you should stop going to that restaurant Okay.